Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to 31 Days of Halloween. Today, I'm giving you a movie, movie, Murphy, <laughs> a movie review. Today, we are talking about The People Under the Stairs, directed, and I believe written, also by Wes Craven. If you want to know how bad my memory is, I just watched this on Sunday uh, with uh, a handful of you guys. Uh, there was, it was a lot of fun. Only J.B. Taylor watched it with me. Maybe next time we can find something that everybody wants to watch. Or you guys can just come and hang out. I'm hoping to do Sunday cinemas every single Sunday. But we'll see what happens. Um, this is one of my favorite horror movies. Um, in a long list of them. I know I say things are favorites all the time. Uh, but this one really is near and dear to my heart. Uh, it is a fun, super fun movie. Um, the performances are over the top. The writing is at times hilarious. Uh, the mother character is very disturbing to me. Um, in fact, all of her scenes really, really get underneath my skin. Um, but she is balanced by what we call, <laughs> what we call kink daddy. Uh, because at one point in time, well, I don't want to spoil it for you, but, uh, you, you'll, you'll find out when you watch it. Um, or if you watched it with me or heard me talking about it on the live stream, then, you know, you already know what I'm talking about. But the, I, I think the movie is, is a perfect, a perfect example of the time frame in which it was made when horror movies, they not really taken too seriously. Um, and I love that Wes Craven did that. You know, the, the, he, he had a lot of really funny moments. Uh, the, the story follows a uh, fool who is a 15-year-old boy, um, and his, I, I was talking during the, and I can't remember, I was talking during the movie, and I can't remember who Ving Rhames' character is to fool, uh, but, yeah, uh, his name's Leroy, um, Leroy has a partner in crime named Spencer, and they are going to rob the, rich family or the rich couple that live in the neighborhood. Um, it's kind of like a Peter, not Peter, um, a Robin Hood story uh, where they're going to steal so that Fool can help pay for his mother's cancer surgery and pay their rent and all of that stuff. The, uh, the couple, the, the villains of the story, uh, own pretty much all of the neighborhood, the liquor store, so on and so forth. In fact, there's a little bit of a subplot with uh, Leroy and Spencer having had robbed the liquor store, uh, I believe the night before or sometime earlier on. The, uh, the couple are super racist, um, so if you, if you don't want to hear the N-word or uh, any of that type of stuff, there's a lot of uh, implied racism also, not just the overt use of the N-word. Um, in fact, one of the strongest scenes for me is when Fool goes, dresses the Boy Scout to scout out the house. Boy Scout, Scout, anyways. Um, he goes to scout out the house and the woman is absolutely terrified of him. Anyways, so the couple has a teenage girl that it can be assumed is their child. Um, and that teenage girl kind of has been, well, not kind of, she has been abused and neglected and it's terrifying what they've done to her. But the movie is called The People Under the Stairs, and there are people under the stairs. This isn't anything supernatural, uh, but there's cannibalism, there is uh, abuse, there's a lot of heavy topics in here, but Wes Craven still manages to make it a very, I don't want to say light horror comedy, but it is nowhere near as dark and, you know, just utterly appalling as something like The Last House on the Left. Um... But yeah, I, I completely loved everything about this. Um, I don't really do the characters pacing in dread for, for movies because I found some movies that, you know, absolutely have absolutely nothing going on entertaining um, with regards to character pacing in dread. Um, so I'm, but I'll use that here. The characters are fantastic. Even the over the top ones, um, the... The, the pacing is a bit slow at parts. I didn't remember whole chunks of this movie that that were slower um all i remembered were the big you know not set pieces but the big scenes in the movie like them being chased and so on and so forth i am also impressed by the fact that this for the majority of this hour and 40 minute movie 
they don't leave the house. It is all them chasing. Um, my one criticism might be that they ran out of things to do with these characters in this house. So there are repeated chase scenes that are almost identical to one another. Uh, there is the death of an animal in here. So if you're worried about that, you know, stay away. Um, uh, there is... I don't, I'm, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to talk about that isn't too much of a spoiler. Um, I, I would love if somebody out there would be willing to go back and watch the movie along with my uh, my commentary uh, and, and see if it works while you watch the movie. There are commercial breaks because I watched it free on Peacock with ads. Um, so you'd have to pause whenever the commercials start. I do tell people when the com commercial started. Um, but anyways, uh, this one is is a movie that I have long uh, wanted to own and I just never bought. I watched it, uh, like I said, free on Peacock. But after watching it, I'm going to add the Blu-ray to my collection because I want to watch this, you know, over and over again. Oddly enough, here's a little bit of a Mandela effect kind of thing. I could have sworn that this movie was based, was set on Halloween night. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to watch it. Um, I even say in the video that <laughs> that uh, I, I think this is a Halloween movie. It is not. Um, so if you're looking for it, it is, it is a horror movie. There are some truly creepy and unsettling scenes in here. Um, but there is also a lot of laughter. That's something that I find, you know, uh, I, I find Wes Craven was really, really good at um, and I miss his social commentary. I miss I miss all that stuff. Um, he was a very fine writer and director, and he just made good good cinema. Um, I think last thing I want to note here is the uh, the the way the movie plays out. There there is a definitely a nostalgia um, effect, and maybe you won't like the over the top acting and you won't like the cheesy dialogue, and you won't like it, but I think it's near and dear to my, my heart, because I went to go see this in the theaters when I was young, when it first came out. I had to have been a teenager at the time, because it came out in the 90s. Um, and I was a teenager for all of the 90s. I'm dating myself. I'm 41 years old. I have no problem saying that. I am very happy with how old I am. But I, there might be a bit of nostalgia here that, that made me love this more than I probably should have i don't know um watch it for yourself make your own but i'm, I'm gonna give it five stars uh my highest possibly possible rating because like howard the duck my favorite movie of all time yes i'm not exaggerating i'm there's not no hyperbole as my favorite movie of all the time so take that into consideration when you take my uh up you know, when you hear my opinion of this movie but have you seen the people out under the stairs uh if you have let me know what you thought about it down there in the doobly-doo, whether or not you loved it, whether or not you hated it, whether or not you felt meh about it. But if you felt any of those things, tell me why in detail so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another episode of 31 Days of Halloween. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.